Hey, this is the uh, force of motion, the first part, which is just about movement and position, okay? So, what we'll do is, the first, we'll just look briefly at how you calculate velocity, distance, uh, displacement time graphs, acceleration and velocity time graphs, and what we can establish from those graphs, okay? So, the first thing we need to know is that speed equals distance over time. So, if we look here, we know that speed equals distance divided by time. Now then, in the past you might have thought of this as miles per hour or kilometers per hour, um, but we need to be thinking about this in terms of our SI units. So we would think of distance always being measured in meters and time measured in seconds. So therefore it's meters divided by seconds, so this would be meters per second, okay? So speed equals distance divided by time. Now, Although I don't favour the triangles, um, you could put this into a triangle if you wanted to, okay? Um, distance is speed times time, okay? So if you wanted to use these triangles, which I don't really advocate, um, but time would equal distance divided by speed, speed would equal distance divided by time, or distance would equal speed times time, alright? now. There's a difference between speed and velocity, because remember, velocity is a vector and it has magnitude and direction. That's really important. Okay, so that's the difference. Velocity has magnitude and direction, and so it's a vector, okay, as opposed to a scalar. Now, if we look then, um, we'd be asked very simple questions on this. So, if you were given a question about speed, distance, and time, a very simple question would be they would give you distance and time, and you would have to put the um, numbers into the formula and find out the speed. Something they might do which would be more difficult would be to give you this in, say, kilometres and the time in, say, minutes. So therefore you've got to convert it into the correct units. Something else they might do to make it slightly more difficult again is force you to rearrange the equation. Alright? So if you think about this, they could say something like, we know the equation is speed equals distance divided by time. What if they said to you, how far would you travel? So what would be the distance you would travel if you travelled with a speed of, say, um, 6 metres per second for one minute? So, for example, if the question said, uh, what, what distance would you cover if you travelled at 6 metres per second for one minute? So obviously we'd rearrange our equation first and we'd say, Distance equals speed times time. So the next thing we'd do is we'd look at, is everything in the right unit? So 6 metres per second, that's fine, it's 6. Now the time, the time is not measured in seconds, it's measured in minutes. So 60 seconds in a minute, so we times it by 60, okay? So we'd say 6 times 60 is 360 metres. So if you travel at 6 metres per second for one minute, you do 6 metres every second, therefore after a minute you've done 360 metres. Okay? Um, advancing from this then, you might see um, distance time graphs. Now, distance time graphs are really, really straightforward. Now, what's difficult is, when you see these graphs, is realising that this axis is distance. Because it will either say distance, or displacement, um, or it will say velocity. Now when it says distance, we've got a distance time graph and there's very little we can find out from a distance time graph. So if we look at a graph, let's say it looked something like this. So they could say, oops, they could say in, a, in an examination question, something like this. You could go from there to say there, then you could do that for a bit and um, we could say, We'll go all the way up, so we'll say, um, we'll go to, there, and we could, um, we could make this come down with a displacement graph, because we'd sure we'd be returning to our original position. So, here we've got a distance time graph. So when the time equals zero, we start. Now we can see that this, if we think of it as somebody running, they cover a distance of, 
10, 20, 30, 40 meters in eight seconds. So if we go along from our graph, we see it goes 40 meters in eight seconds. So we could say, what is the speed for this part of the journey? So if we call it, say, A, and we would say, well, the speed at A, speed equals distance divided by time. The distance covered is 40. The time is eight. So we would say 40 divided by eight is five meters per second. So this, for the journey at A, we can see that this individual is running at a constant speed of five meters per second for eight seconds. And the total uh, velocity for, for that part there is five meters per second. Then we can see they do something else when they reach this point here. They stop because the distance from wherever they started was 40 and it's still 40 here. So if we call this section B, we could say at A, it's a constant speed, but at B, this person has stopped. Now, if we thought about this and we said, we've got another part, we'll call it C. If we look at C and we say, well, what, what's happening here? Well, we can say, how far have they traveled at C? And at C, they've traveled only another 10. So the speed at C, speed is distance divided by time, is 10 divided by four, okay? 10 divided by four is 2.5, so it's 2.5 meters uh, per second. So if you look at this then, we can see when the graph is steeper, it's going faster. When it's going straight, we can see that it's a constant speed. And when it, the gradient is less, we can see that, that speed is less. Now, obviously, if the graph then if it was a displacement time graph and the graph then returned to here, then what's happening then would be the individual has run 50 meters away from their home and then they've run 50 meters back again. So if this was a displacement time graph, the final displacement would be zero because they finished up where they started. However, the distance they've covered was 50 away and 50 back. So if you're looking at their speed, the average speed for the whole journey, the distance divided by time, it would be 100 divided by 22, okay? Now then, that, they're very straightforward, but the next type aren't so straightforward. So before we do the next thought, it's just really important we remember acceleration. So acceleration, oops, Daisy. Acceleration equals change in velocity or speed divided by time taken. Now, if we remember, change in velocity, so velocity is measured in meters per second, time is measured in seconds, so the unit of acceleration is meters per second squared. So a question on this, you would have a change in velocity and a time in order to calculate acceleration. Again, you might be asked to, they might give you time in minutes or hours and you'd have to convert it. They might, uh, you might be forced to rearrange the equation. But a very simple um, question might look something like this. Calculate the acceleration of, say, a car which is traveling at 10 meters per second. And suddenly it accelerates to a faster speed. So we'll say it accelerates to 30 meters per second. Now it takes a time to do this. And we could say the time it takes to go from 10 meters per second to 30 meters per second, we'll say is five seconds. So we could say, what's the acceleration? So the acceleration Acceleration is the change in speed divided by the time. So the change in speed from 10 to 30 is 20. That's the change. So it'd be 20 divided by the time, which was five. 20 divided by five is four meters per second squared. So that's the rate of acceleration. Now, if we look at something slightly harder, 
This here is a velocity time graph, and this is there's a lot you can learn from a velocity time graph. So if we, I'll draw a very simple one um, because they quickly fill up with information. So if we pick something nice and straightforward, so we'll say we're going to start from here, we'll go to there, we'll go to there, and then we could say um, we'll come back again because this will keep it quite quite tidy. So I'll just draw these lines on so we can see. Alright, so, that there, should be there. So, here we've got somebody who is starting here, and they are going from a velocity of zero, and they are speeding up to a velocity of 10 meters per second. And they are doing that in 10 seconds. So there are different things we can establish. We could firstly say, well, they must be getting faster and faster and faster. They must be accelerating. So along this journey, they must be accelerating. But then they reach a constant speed of 10 meters per second. So unlike the distance time graph, the velocity time graph, this line here shows acceleration. It's not a constant speed, it's an acceleration. So it accelerates to a speed of 10 meters per second then it goes at a constant speed of 10 meters per, se per second. Then, then it slows down again from 10 meters per second down to zero again. So if we look at what is the rate of acceleration here? So we know acceleration is the change in speed divided by time. So the change in speed is 0 to 10, which is 10, divided by time, which is 10, so the acceleration there was one meter per second. Apologies, my uh, 10 divided by 10, which equals one meter per second squared. Now then, here the acceleration is zero because it starts at 10, it finishes at 10, so the change in speed is zero. So the acceleration is zero meters per second here because it's a constant speed. And if we were to look at the bottom part here, this is actually going from 10 to 0, so it's decelerating, it's getting slower, it's slowing down, it's negative acceleration. So here, the change in speed is from 10 to 0, so it's 10, and this time it took 4. Now that is 2.5 meters per second squared. But of course, this is deceleration, so it's if we think about it as negative acceleration, it's minus 2.5 meters per second squared at that point. So whilst we can work out acceleration, constant speed, deceleration, there's more we can work out from one of these graphs. We could also work out, we could also work out the distance traveled. Because we remember, speed equals distance divided by time. So distance equals speed times time. Now where we've got speed times time, because that's the two axes of our graph, the area under the graph will give us the distance traveled. So if we split this into A, B, and C, we can re realize that the area under the graph is the distance traveled. So, area under A is just simply the width times the height. But because it's a triangle, it's half of it. Rather than it being the base times the height, which would give you this big area, it's a half of that because it's a triangle, it's half base times height. So the area of this is simply one half times base, which is 10, times height, which is 10. So that would give you 10 times 10 is 100, half of it is 50 meters. So that would be 50 meters. Now B is not a triangle, it's a big rectangle. The base of it goes from 10 to 16, which is six. The height is 10. Six times 10 is 60 meters. And the last one, a half base times height, a half of four is two 
times height, which is 10, gives you 20 meters. So the total distance that this person has traveled whilst they've accelerated to 10 meters per second and they've traveled at a constant speed um, and then they've decelerated is 50 plus 60 plus 20, which is 80, 130. So the total distance is 130 meters. If you were then asked, okay, well, what is the average speed for this journey, okay? You could say the average speed, because obviously the velocity is zero because it starts here and it finishes in the same place, but the average speed is the total distance traveled divided by the time taken. So that the average speed for this whole journey through acceleration, constant speed and deceleration would just simply be speed equals distance divided by time. The distance is 130 for the whole journey. The time is 20. Oops, a daisy. And that there would be uh, 6.5 meters per meters, sorry, per second. Uh, meters per second, okay? So that is what you can establish from this velocity time graph. Okay, there's a lot to take from that. 